what is good? What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Fresh Bunner, and welcome to another edition of LGR Reviews. And we are back with reviewing We Own the City. We got episode five. It was a great episode. Man, I thought it's it's the episode where everything comes to head. But I'm not alone. I'm never alone. I got my boys with me. Caleb, how are you, my man? I'm good. Always ready to talk to some uh, to talk about this show, man. It's great, y'all. I love it. This is, uh, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Give them the Emmys. I want to give them the Emmys, bro. The people the Emmys. But Caleb, we're back. The man who's been here all the time is the main man, Hendo. Hendo, how are you, man? I'm well on yourself. Thank you for having me. Hey, man. Pleasure to have you, bro. It's our, it's, it's our, it's our pleasure. And he's back after taking one week off, unfortunately. But he's back. He's the man, the myth, the legend. He is young wolf himself. He is Jesus' nephew. He's Deshaun. Deshaun, how are you, my man? What's good, bro? I'm chilling. Appreciate you having me back, bro. Yeah. Hey, man, let's get right into it, guys. Let's let's get to overall thoughts of this episode. Then we'll break it down piece by piece. So let's go with you, Deshaun. Your overall thoughts on this episode. Overall thoughts is that I really enjoyed it, and I thought that we kind of seen all the pieces of the puzzle come together this episode. Like, we started to see, like, a lot more of um, <clears throat> the things coming, like, sort of to a close. And I really enjoyed just really the acting in this one was extraordinary, too. Like, you know, I'm a person that's about the finer details of um, TV and movies. So, like, I, I always appreciate the camera work, the acting, um, just overall work put in on this episode. You could tell they, they stepped it up. Mm-hmm. Hand up. I love it. Like, the acting is just so real. Like, I actually had my family watch it with me. And they and my children asked, like, is he from Baltimore? Because he has that he has that accent down pat. Like that dude is East Baltimore all the way. Um, I love how they which they, one? Who 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 in there? Which which, which which accent? Do you really have to ask that? Oh, oh so, so it's Bernthal? Okay, got you. Oh, I got you you really have to ask that? Like, he, <laughs> no bad. like hey, man, like, I don't know. There's other, there's more more than one actor, man. It is, but he. Oh, well, you know what? My apologies, because you're not from here, so you wouldn't no. know. But Jenkins, he has. That Caucasian Dundalk mm-hmm. East Baltimore cop down, yeah. and like I said, it impressed my family. And my kids don't like much like myself, but I, I like how they put everything together. Um, I like how they kind of it how accurate everything is. Like a lot of people don't know, like this stuff is extremely accurate and it's not made up, it's not fiction. As you see, they don't put in the beginning, you know, some likenesses or some things like that. It is actually real. They name the people. And the crazy thing is, I got a text from uh, my homegirl the other day. And when Suda was talking to that young lady about the shooting in the alley, Mm -hmm. it was her homegirl. And she told me, she was surprised. She said, I'm surprised they used her real name. Like that's how accurate everything is. They use the girl's real name and real identity. And the girl don't even know that they're portraying her on a TV series, but I love it. It's some other things I'll get into later on, but this 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 is blowing me away. Are we talking about the girl that he kind of like yells at and he like he makes the one who take- the one who snitched on her boyfriend who did the shooting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yes, wow. that is her home, that is her home girl. She sent me a text wow. saying, I don't know if she knows that they did this and put her real name out there. Wow. Oh wow. And even in this episode, <laughs> when they when they robbed a couple of houses. They use the real names of the people whose houses they went into. See, now that's fascinating. They could get sued if they didn't get permission. You definitely got to uh, have all the waivers and stuff signed, mm-hmm. if, especially uh, when you, you use people's real names. But, but essentially, well, maybe the girl, but essentially with the criminals, do you really? The criminals, not yeah. really. Yeah. No, you, 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 when you, you use somebody's identification ID on, um, <clears throat> excuse me like something that's like a biopic you you gotta have all that paperwork like taken care of like before mm-hmm. y'all even start shooting because you know what i'm saying that could put somebody in danger that could be you know put mm-hmm. somebody at risk so they always i'm pretty sure they had like somebody I, yeah. talk to them beforehand like that would be wild if they didn't though but you yeah. got—I mean, you got to think about it. Like, if they portrayed me in this movie somehow, and I sued them, and they said, "Hey, Tony, we'll give you a hundred thousand dollars to shut the hell up." Okay. Well, it was. Well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's you know, that's how they have that money because they HBO. Uh, yeah, okay. it's like, 
If, if it wasn't oh, right. HBO, it's then it's maybe that would be more likely. But it's like just because yeah. of how big they are, like I'm sure they covered their bases. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, like because I'm pretty sure Free Ray Rick Ross has sued a couple people without, with like, because they've used his name without his permission a couple times. He sued a couple people. He actually tried to sue. He he tried to sue Snowfall actually. Yeah, he tried to sue Snowfall about about because he is like because it like it's similar to his story in L.A. Right. It's not completely similar to him. Because there's other drug dealers, they kind of mismatched into the Snowfall story, but he he took them to court, and I I think I don't think he won because they realized this isn't just you. Like Franklin Sane is more than you. He's like two other drug dealers. So like, so you can't really. So he didn't win the case, but he's done it before. So because like because John Singleton like didn't because they never talked to him, and the reason is that it wasn't him. So he but he assumed it was him, and he took them to court. And yeah, so and that's like a real thin line between like, um, a, like a portrayal of events, sort of like what mm -hmm. Snowfall did, like loosely. But then you yeah. got some stuff that's like a straight up biopic, where yeah, we're acting out everything that happened as it happened. Like we're trying to get this mm -hmm. like to the T exactly. So I think it's that's, like a thin yeah. line between them two. Like straight out of Compton, like Ice Cube and mm -hmm. Dr. Dre were producers. Yeah, and they're that's telling, a biopic, yeah, bro. like yeah, they're telling their story. You know, it wasn't very good because they lied a few <laughs> times. I know you lied, Dre. Don't, no, Dre. I know you lied, Dre. Don't mess with me. I hear crying because your brother. Yeah, that, I hear that crying because your brother died. A R E S, Doctor Dre. I don't care. <laughs> hey, Dre. Dre, know where to find me. Wow. I hear trying to. I hear crying after his brother died. Like it, that was a real event. Get out of here, hey, Dre. Hey, stop it first. Stop. Right. stop. Hey, hello. Let him right. know. That was right. Ferris. Ferris. That was F A R E S, not Deshaun, not Hendo. Not <laughs> I'm just, yeah, Ferris Mutana. I'm just first. Somebody right. died, man. Stop right. it. Stop. Right. Right. Stop right. first. First. All right. I'm kidding. Somebody, you already know how we're All right. All right. All right. All right. Forget that scene. Forget. I'm sorry, oh, yeah. Dre. I'm sorry, Dre. Wow. But I know you. But I know you beat that woman, so don't lie. Um, <laughs> everybody did. You did it in front of like you did it in front of like a hundred people. All right. But forget about forget about Dre. Forget about Dre. Like like Eminem said. Uh, Caleb, your overall thoughts on this episode? Uh, yeah, I just like seeing all, um, how crazy he's getting. Um, I thought like really really good episode. Um, and also like I mean even though it's like real stuff and real shit talking about. Um, you know, stuff that really happened. I mean, sometimes you just gotta, just gotta laugh about what the hell's going on in this show. Um, seeing, uh, you know, these two guys going at each other like that, uh, the lengths that they're willing to go to to, you know, steal and do what they're doing. I um, mean, yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, I know it's like how, how it affect real people, but I mean, shit, I mean, it's just kind of funny. It's like, holy, I mean, I can help but laugh about all, all, all the stuff that they be doing. And then you see how it does affect all, all these people. Um, not just you know, the people involved and like like people who were a part of it, like uh, Suter. You see how it's affecting him. And so all those parts, yeah, I think are really really good. Hey man, dude, let's get just do this. Get right into like scene one, where Gondo and Ray. I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna start writing each other out. They start shitting on each other, man. Like like it starts with um, they bring up a gunshot wound, Gondo suffered. And he's like, yo, someone tried to rob me. I don't know what you, I put it in the report. What are you talking about? And they're like, well, no, you lied. You know why you lied? Ram told us you were selling drugs and you no, were shot. No, Ferris. Ram did not say, they didn't confirm that it was Ram. They said somebody. Oh, that's your good point. And then he assumed it was Ram. And then and then he starts writing out Ram, talking about like Ram had a, had a, had a vagina addiction. Um, so like, <laughs> so, so they start like, they start like, just, I'm a you know what I mean? Sex addiction is not a real thing, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> okay. Wow. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ferris. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, man, I don't hide. I don't hide. My name is right there. I don't, you know, I don't believe it. So, Caleb, back to you. When you were watching this scene where the two dudes where we assumed that they were tight as thick as thieves, actually had no honor like thieves, and they just started writing no. each other out. Continue. Your thoughts, bro. No, that's it's one of the parts I was just laughing at. It's like it's, just, it's funny to see these two dudes. Oh, we were like boys, and then they just, you know, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna throw them on the bus. You know, he's he, he not telling the whole story. There's yeah, two conflicting stories about um 
how he got shot, how, how Ryman got shot, and how um, what should we call um, how he got suspended, and how he got suspended with pay, um, for shooting like three people, and he and you know, obviously I could put the stories that more than three people. Did. It was more. It was more than three. It was more than three. Three were unjustified, but he no, had like, it was, like, no, yeah, yeah. Eight, eight, no, it was like three. It was just. It was just three that year that he spoke about. Oh, that just year. Back yeah, three in one year. Three in one year. Okay, yeah, good point. Yeah. And uh, obviously, he, he claimed self defense, but he, you know, is more drug related, and yeah, um, and then you see later on how there's, you know, it really is an automatic thing because they're stealing from each other. They're not telling, you know, who, um, that they're, you know. They're pocketing money and they're not telling the other people. And we've seen that before. With dollars, he wasn't telling um that he was stealing um from them. And yeah, they they, they really care the night. Um, I mean, they seem like they're good friends, you know. They hang out each other, but yeah, it was funny. Um, but yeah, well, that was funny. That was good, good stuff right there. Hendo, do you did you share Caleb's sentiment of this was funny as hell when you were watching it? It was amusing. I don't know about yeah. funny. I just thought, you know, if you look at it, um, Gondo, he just started snitching off off jump. He just started oh, yeah. running his mouth. I don't think Ram wanted to snitch, but after they just kept coming back to him, like, yo, your boy said, your boy said, your boy said, and he finally was like, you know what? Forget it. I have nothing to lose. Like, I call this the stop snitching episode because they just can't seem to stop snitching on one another. Like he told all of his mis mishaps, misdeeds, the shootings, um, how the girl, he had a girlfriend that gave him targets to set up and how the deputy commissioner, then the colonel at the time, helped mm -hmm. get him over. But the craziest thing to me was all of these so-called justified shootings wasn't why he got suspended. He got suspended for stealing money. That's the crazy part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he, he probably he probably, he probably shot like three black people. So like, let's be real. You can you can like get death duty and you and you move on if you do that. And it's 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 despicable to be honest. It's borderline despicable. Like like a cop like murdered someone in cold blood. And like, yeah, it's fine. It's cool. It is what it is. And like there were traffic stops. They brought up there were traffic stops too. Like two right. of them were traffic stops, and one of them wasn't a traffic stop. So I'm like. You get stopped in traffic, you probably got like a bad tail light, and then boom, you did. And you're like, What yeah. the hell? We're like, whoa, you know what I mean? So Deshaun, your thoughts, my man. Yeah, so <clears throat> I just want to start by saying that the actor that portrays Ram um is becoming one of my favorite actors. Like the dude <laughs> yeah, is facts. <laughs> facts. This dude is elite, man. Um, I want to give him his flowers, but uh, yeah, to what Hendo said, it, it kind of um, takes you back a little bit that you can kill as many innocent black people as you want, but when you start taking money, that's when we got a problem, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it kind of just blatantly points out the feelings of the higher-ups and how they view things is, like, we don't care really about murder and, you know, the lives of the innocent people. It really kind of makes you wonder if like are they doing the same thing just at a different pace, different level? Because they don't like it's the same way with the cops. Don't care about. So it makes me just. Just... All right, my bad. Sorry, Sean, you cut out for me, so I was waiting right. for you. And I mean, yeah. if, you, if you listen to what he was, if you heard what he was saying, yeah. you got to look at it like this. The sergeant didn't come out. The lieutenant didn't come out. You know, the captain didn't come out. The colonel came out and coached him through it. Mm -hmm. How often do you get somebody that high up to come out and coach you through a killing. So you know mm -hmm. that all these things are corrupt and they all they do some they do certain things and they kind of keep it in house. But like he said, you kill a black person, you good. You steal and don't share. Now the stealing portion of it isn't a problem. The not sharing part is what gets you in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like if we're gonna be criminals, we're gonna be criminals together, god damn it. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. then if you don't be sharing the wealth, you know, you want you, you think it's like mm -hmm. 
Cause like you're like you're stealing and not sharing with other criminals, and guess what? You know who's vindictive? Criminals. Criminals. <laughs> yeah, like you know what I mean. Like, like, like we have yeah. watched so many shows about criminals when a criminal finds out that someone's skimming off the top without them knowing, or they didn't approve the skimming, and guess what happens to the guy who did the skimming? They get chopped up and thrown into a river. You know what I mean? Like it, it happens all the time. But you so know, like, who, you know who's worse than criminals at that? Cops. Deputized criminals or yes. commission criminals; mm -hmm. those are the worst yeah. ones, ones with badges criminals and authority. Badge. Yeah. So that's really that's um like the big crux of this episode was um was uh, what's her name? Dang it, what's her name? Um, the actress who played Nicole Steele. So she then goes like around town interviewing people about it. Mm -hmm. But like first, before that, we we check in with Sean Souter, the detective. Uh, I remember last week when Jose was on, he said. The reason he found out about the story was through the Sean Suter aspect of the story. And you're just you're just seeing like Sean Suter, how he's like, dude, I'm just trying to do my job. And I'm trying, I'm trying to be real murder police. Like, someone help me, goddammit. Like, it's just like I'm trying to find out who killed this kid. And you could just see like the like the erosion of like, like, cause cause the old man who like stopped Sean, he assumed like you probably one of those um Jump those out. Jack jump out boys, right? And Sean was like, I did that once or twice. And like you can see, like you can see like the shame in it, his shame in his voice and his eyes. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I did that. I'm, I'm like his because the older the older gentleman, he's, he's a much older man. So he's basically saying, like his elder, like, yeah, I was I was one of those pieces of shit. And the old man's like, but you seem like a good a good young man, but I ain't talking to you. You know what I mean? Like, like that's how much of the erosion of the relationship is gone. Like, like the old man sees that he's trying to do his job and he seems like a nice young, young man, but there's this like stank on Sean. It's just like, nah, homie, you, you got a badge. I'm sorry. Like, I don't care. Your ass could be Mother Teresa, but your ass works with the Baltimore Police Department. I, I ain't talking to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even though Mother Teresa was also not a good person, but that's not that's not the point I'm trying Sadly. to make here. Sorry. Um, my, my bad. Uh, but yeah, man, like, what? What? Okay, fine. I, I won't touch it. I won't touch it. Let's talk about how Sean is just really struggling out here, man. He's just really struggling out here. And I'm pretty yeah. sure episode six is gonna be all Sean. It's gonna be Sean, like because like because the way Jose talked about it is that like he had a big part in it. What, do y'all know what the real story of what happened with Sean Suter? Like, mm -hmm. do you know we're not, Sean? Gonna, we're not gonna talk about it now, but we're not gonna yeah. talk about it. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. You, uh, you know I, what happened, right? No, I, I didn't look it up. I didn't I didn't look up any of this. No. Okay, I, I well, no, no. You know Deshaun? What happened? No, to him? I'm, 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 listen, I'm you know, yeah. that, save this and save that portion for okay. another episode. No, you definitely it's... don't don't talk about it now because okay. Be all right, you know what? You know what? Yeah. You know, let's just you know, let's just skip all of Sean's stuff in this episode. No, we well, no, we can. Just, we can just, 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 I wanna. I wanna talk, just don't talk about his real life story. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, right. we can talk about this, especially I, that scene. Like I understand that that. Yeah, yeah that was scene. definitely a great, yeah, great scene that was needed. But I have an issue with that scene. And what's your issues? What's your issues, my issue with that scene is like many issues with a lot of shows. You always have this one person standing out aside from the crowd. And then the cop says, hey, what do you know about this situation? I don't talk to police. So why the hell are you standing so close <laughs> so I can come talk to you? That's the, that's the only problem that I have. Everybody else is standing in the background. He's standing up close looking. Then when he says, hey, let me talk to you. I don't talk to police. But like, <laughs> let, let me lecture you. Let me lecture you about how being a, how bad of a person you person you are. Now yeah, you could yeah. you could be saying all the right things and not giving him any information, but if the wrong person sees you standing there talking to that cop, mm -hmm. it could be your life. So why mm -hmm. even put yourself in that position? That's my only problem with. It. Like it was a That's good why scene. Minding your business is the healthiest way to live. Listen, mm -hmm. cops come to my house all the time and be like, "Hey, can we check your ring camera?" Nope. Mm -mm. Keep mm -hmm. pushing. I don't want to yeah. be involved. Yeah, see, the problem is that when cops come to the store. It's always like the victim's always like a like a neighbor, like mm -hmm. or someone in the neighborhood, and like we know them. I'm like, all right, man, what happened? Here it is. Like I give, like I I I don't give them the code. I just, I put it in for right. them. I was like, just well, see that's thing. that's different. It's, it's yeah. people that you know. These yeah. cops just show up and say, hey, something happened six blocks away, and we just want to see if the car ran down the street. Yeah. What? No, thank yeah. you. Have a good day. There's um there so like there's a mugging nearby the store. And um, and the and the camera, like saw the street, and mm -hmm. they caught they caught the mugging. 
So they had to like take the so they had to download the footage of it. But the problem is like it was it was in the dark. So you you, you saw you saw the you saw the people. You, you saw the lady. You, you but you saw them but you're like ah we can't see anything. Like we can't see their faces. So they just took the footage and like they went on their way. You know what right. I mean? And then a couple weeks ago there was a shooting down the street from us. Like no no not not no sorry, not even down the street. Legit like there's there's the block the stores on. And then, like the very next, like you know how like there's a connecting intersection, a crosswalk. Mm -hmm. That's where the shooting was, like right there. That's how close we were to the shooting. That's so like, so and everybody knew about the shooting, right? And like pe people almost got hurt, so we had to give the the cops some tape. Uh, the, nobody's like the problem is they ran away from the store, so nothing was caught, so they didn't download anything. Mm -hmm. So they're like, ah, right, this is a dead end. I was like, all right, you have a nice day, officer. Keep it moving. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you know, so weird, bro. I started watching the show. Two cops have come to my store in like back, back, back weeks because <clears throat> they've because they've seen you, they've seen the video, and they want to intimidate you and let you yeah. know. Yeah. Listen, watch what you say, bro. Yeah, we're right. We we we're here. Well, well, no, like, well, two, well, one of them like bought snacks, Tony. That don't mean anything. So I can't intimidate you while feeding myself. Good point. Well, I was intimidated. He was a, well, I was intimidated, man. The guy was fat. That's not, so the, like, that's not the point. Like, yeah, that's not the point. Like, for my head. Right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I wasn't intimidated. Like, he didn't really scare me. You may not be intimidated, but other people may be. Good point. Good point. Um, I even, Okay, I have, a, I have a question, man. Oh, wait, no, no, Fred. I keep forgetting. Sean, your thoughts on the suitor stuff and the, the, the ensuing instance of, like, Sean, like, basically having shame and regret in his face. Not yet. Um, so y'all know that my favorite character on the show is Sean. And I just like um, the fact that he's trying to do things the right way. You can tell it's not like, you know, some ulterior motive. It's not like he's uh, the one organizing it. He's just he got caught up in the midst of some bad stuff. And he was in. I think last time I was on here, we kind of got we kind of got into that like what do you choose in that situation? Do you choose your integrity or do you choose to follow these dudes who, if you don't, might make something happen to you, might have you transferred or even worse? You know what I'm saying? Like, you never know. So I like how we see in the division of that character and also, um, <clears throat> you know, like, like you said, he's he have that internal battle. And I think that's what makes for, like, great TV is when you have a character struggling with an internal battle with the internal conflict. So um, over seeing though uh, it kind of made and you could tell that he wasn't proud of it. That's the big thing. Like you can tell Sean's not proud of anything I was involved in that he was involved in. You can tell that he feels complicit, especially like later on in the episode when you see his reaction to the news of him getting arrested. I know we'll talk about that later, but I really just enjoy the like the internal fight that Sean is having. Keb, your thoughts, man. Um, yeah, like like Sean was saying, you see the confliction on his face. Um, and you really feel like he really feels like he's trying to do good even the way he says well i'm homicide he's kind of like feeling like well i'm one of the good ones and then you tell him like no well, you always weren't uh you always weren't like that like you were one of these people yeah he feels like that too like did he freeze did he freeze on me yeah he froze oh, okay all right, well. All right, he's still broke. Well, we'll see if he's unfrozen. So, yeah, right. it's, 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 yeah. It, my, my thing is, in, in a lot of these situations, you have police oh, he's officers. Back. He's back. Oh, okay. Caleb, you back? You froze a little. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. You All right, finish your thought, man. Finish your thought, bro. Oh. Uh, I don't know where I where even where I froze, but. Oh, uh, yeah, the I'm beginning. Just saying, like, um. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, the beginning, the whole thing. Oh, shit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess saying he was conflicted because you saw the regret in his face. You saw the regret on, on the board, like saying, oh, the whole time my involvement was this just pointless, all, all this war on drugs, everything I was doing um, didn't amount to anything. And yeah, he, he was trying to say like, oh, I'm one of the good ones by saying, oh, I'm, I'm homicide. And, you know, I'm trying to solve murders. That I think that's why I switched because he's trying to, feel, trying to do good because he does feel like he's trying to be a good cop. But, you know, he was involved in that. And then, yeah, you see all the regrets. Mm -hmm. Tony. You were about to say something. Oh, I was just going to say, um, police officers, as in politics, in certain instances, you have guys that get into it for the right reasons. But to advance, you have to do some things or join some kind of organizations or squads mm -hmm. that you don't want to be a part of just mm -hmm. to get just to make that promotion. And I think that that's what happened with Suter. You know, he got into the gun trace task force just to get a quick promotion because everybody knows you go in with Jenkins, you get results. You move on, you move up. But now, you know, his name has a sort of connotation to it or he has some stank on his name because he was associated with it. And at the end of the episode, you kind of see some things, but we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. no, well, well, yeah, absolutely right, bro, with that, because it's the same way with politics. Like, regardless of how a person might feel morally on a situation, they're going to just go with whatever their party decides. You know, regardless of what it means for, you know, their own person or how they actually feel about it. It's almost like blind loyalty. Uh, you exactly right with that. Well, I know exactly, man. Like, that's what he told Maurice. He was like, hey, get in the, get in the task force. Get out. Learn what you can and get the hell out. Get out. Don't stay. Don't stay. And Maurice, he made the mistake of staying. But hold up. But isn't Maurice Ward the one who got who moved to Philly? I think he's the one who moved to Philly, I think. So like mm. he think I think I don't know. I don't know for a fact. I don't know for a fact. Don't don't quote me on that. No, it was, yeah, another, so like, it was another it was yeah. another guy that moved to Philly. Yeah, yeah, because one of the one of the one of the members like was like, I'm going, I'm going to another city, not another department. I'm going to another city to get away from these people. He was smart. So like so yeah, so like so like he told he told Ward, get in, get out, get in, get out. That's all you gotta do. And it's genius, you know, because sometimes, you know, sometimes you can learn some things from bad people, you know, stuff not to do. And, you know, like, like it is what it is. But now, like, more, moreover, like, in, okay, I have a question, everybody. Yo, is the, so, like, you know how, like, it's kind of, this show's kind of broken into, like, three pieces? Like, you have the federal prosecutors, um, the, 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 the federal lawyers from the DOJ, and the cops. Are y'all confused on what time period that the federal prosecutors are every time you see them? No, because I no. think the federal prosecutors are uh, current. And that's why they do like the little intro with um, Jenkins typing the report and the date and all that. Because mm -hmm. everything that doesn't have that you see is the, the prosecutors. That's, that's got to be current events. Yeah, Because okay. the they the reference like, Freddie Gray in past tense a lot too. Yeah, the prosecutors are around 2015 to 2017. So they okay. come in. They come in at the latter half. Yeah, no, because like you can also tell when they mention yeah, Freddie Gray in past tense. Like mm -hmm. that's how you know it's like it's, well, not yeah. current now, but yeah, the, the latest then. possible time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, because I was kind of lost for a minute, and I was like, so I started thinking about it. Like this is probably like the movie Memento, where like the 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 black and white is one is 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 this is the is the current timeline, and then like the color um the, the in color. Is like the that already happened timeline, and they're converging together, and so like I was kind of confused for a little bit, cause like I was just a little lost. I was like, I, I, I got I got discombobulated a little. They do a lot of jumping around. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but but more like all they really did was talk to Ram and Gondo, and then they put trackers on on some cars. But really, like we get into like the people aspect of the show is when Nicole Steele, the or the the actress playing Nicole Steele. Went to go talks to James Otis. Like, mm -hmm. I want to know how important this man is. Where they give us his full name and his story. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know how important this man is. I don't know. Like, did did everyone in the city know who he is? Or, like, I, I don't understand because like, he is the one who, who. Yeah. Did you know who this man was? Did, did I didn't like, know did who he know? was, but I yeah. but I saw them reference him back at the end when they showed his car on top of the uh, tow truck or whatever. Uh, yeah. And they kind of referenced back to what he was talking about, how he can't afford to, you know, pay off his car and stuff like that because he lost mm -hmm. his job. But 
I also think that was um, <clears throat> one of those examples like we've seen in a couple other episodes, um, just in a little more detail with the the humanity aspect of it, how these cops don't see these people as people and how these cops greed and their pettiness has a direct impact on these people's lives. Even if you're not pistol whipping them, even if you're not throwing them around on the ground, just by you taking that one check, you basically ruin this man's life and cause the snowball effect of other stuff that happens. So I think that was just another example of um, how that, um goes and how they just how it affects the citizens for real. Mm-hmm. I mean I don't know if Hendo knows um do you know about no. No. Uh, yeah it feels like this is like this is like that one kid who got pistol whipped and had that big old gash in the middle of his forehead. Y'all remember that kid? Mm-hmm. Yeah we, we like I think they're just telling us like individual stories from different points of views throughout the city because like this kid this this point of view of this kid like that kid was a kid he was like eight seventeen and he was just like just walking down the street and they pistol whipped him and they got that old gold gas. He mm-hmm. is a working man. Like this, this don't mm-hmm. seem like a man who would be running and gunning in the streets, you know. This is a man who got a wife, two kids. He's an HVAC cleaner, like yeah. operator. Like he cleans HVACs and he loses he loses his job because he didn't get his into his calls, and then they lost two um two clients because they arrested him. Personally, man, like the, the his boss, knowing he's in the city of Baltimore, knowing that this dude just got jacked up for bull for neon sense, I would have kind of given him a little leeway. But you know, in this world, no one gives nobody leeway. So like, I just feel sorry for James, honestly, man, because like this is just another story, like Deshaun said, of how like just like that dude who got who who Allers robbed, mm-hmm. ends up dying a week later because that was the money he owed his drug dealer because he was selling. And they had to make an example out yep. of him. And he didn't, James didn't die, but now he's on his like last legs because now, because he, because he, he just, he, he explained it. Every check I get, it's to the rent. No, it's to the mortgage. It's to the car payment. It's for the kids. I keep nothing. I keep nothing. Now, now this family got w- one parent working and we're struggling with two. So one I need to get a job quick. And it's just like, dude, that scene was just so just like, I, I, like I feel sorry for the brother. Like I generally like felt like, yo man, like that's, that's, you can't really say much. Like I'm like, and bro, it was I'm so sorry, man. It's yeah. personal to him all for like, he only made what, like 600 and something dollars for that check. But yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. They'll take anything, man. They'll take any, whatever they can get their hands on. And you see that six hundred dollar check basically ruined that man's life and his family's. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's the part about these cops that just eats me up for real because they don't care yeah. about the consequences unless it affects them. Yeah, yeah, um, hey man, they're like they're like they're like crackheads who steal anything not pinned down. Right now That's what they are. That's what they are. I think that they just I think that they just use his name for contextual accuracy just to show everybody how accurate it is. And for me, this is a very powerful scene because it, it shows more in the line of the aftermath of what happens mm-hmm. for erroneous arrest. Now, I liken this to the recidivism in the jail system. You go to jail, you come out, you got this stigmatism, you can't get a job, you can't feed your family. So what are mm-hmm. you supposed to do? You go back into crime. Now, this man was a working man, paying his mortgage, paying his car payment, taking care of his kids, you know, a concept that many people don't see from too many black men. And now, because this man, this cop, this white cop is corrupt, like you just destroyed this man's whole life. And what is he supposed to do? It's emasculating. And like, what what is he supposed to do? Where is he supposed to go? Now, is he going to turn to crime because he can't get a job? Because he doesn't have a ride to get to work? Like, it's all of these factors Mm-hmm. That I think that they're trying to display to the viewers outside of just police corruption. I just think that they're trying to show the aftermath of what's going on. Caleb, your thoughts, my brother? Um, yeah, it just pisses you off, man. Seeing how important this money was to this guy, and how unimportant it was to hurt Ursel. Like he just pisses all the way, having a good all the time. Like it didn't mean much, but it meant everything to us, dude. You know, met the job. Um, you know, met you know. 
you got you got rest for nothing. You know, every time you every time I see Herschel do that little bump and say it's on police officer, like shit, like come on, like, that, that pisses me off. Right, that, that, that shit, that shit, ir- that shit mad irritates me. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, bro. I, you know, the horrible thing is like the other cops just like stand there and back him like, up and back him up. Dude, I'm like, bro, yeah. like, yeah, man, like it's, dude, like I just was. If there's five bad cops and mm-hmm. a thousand cops don't say nothing about the five bad cops, it's a thousand and five a, bad cops. There's a, there's a thousand and five bad cops. Like it's a, like like there's jobs. Like I think I've said this on the show. There's jobs that cannot have bad apples. <laughs> they can't like imagine if there's five bad doctors or surgeons, surgeons guys, and every yeah. year, every year the medical board or the other surgeons are like, eh, he killed somebody, but it is what it is. Yeah, Dude, really. that man, like that man would lose his job. Yep. Like you in in the here's the thing too. You sue that man, then you sue the hospital, then you and then you get a lot of money for ki- killing like your dad or your mom in surgery. Or messing up a surgery, you could sue them out the wazoo. But and that's a cops. job where you have to go through eight years of training in mm-hmm. school and gaining experience and expertise to make sure you don't <clears throat> turn into a bad apple. Whereas yeah. the police academy, you got an easier t- chance, you got a harder chance of getting a driver's license than getting through the police academy. <laughs> sometimes, mm-hmm. like it's only like a couple months, if that. Well, actually, you know, the police academy actually plays a big part in this episode a little later on with the former cop who talks to Nicole Steele about, about, the, about the way they've kind of militarized the police when they started the, the war on drugs. You know, cops used to be before, you know, before the 70s, uh, before Nixon declared war, the cops mm-hmm. were cops, you know, they just drove around and stuff. Ain't no cop rolling around a neighborhood with like a tank. Masquerading right. as like a car, like it is, you know, that yeah. didn't used to never happen. But but now let's switch over, guys. So back to like an interview with with um with Raymond, Raymond and Gondo, where they t- where they talked to Raymond that Gondo said Ooh. that Ray. I don't know Ray Ray Ram? Ram. 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 Yeah. Sorry, my bad, Ray. By the way, the actor Deshaun is Darrell Britt Gibson. So point Darrell that out. Gibson. Yeah, Word Darrell Britt Gibson. Yeah, so shout to him. Uh, Ram, they tell Ram, Gondo said the GTTF went downhill after he joined. And then Ram was like, hell no. He was there from the mix. What is going on? And, like, and they're just, again, they're just ratting each other out. And you know, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I was laughing my ass off to these scenes where they're dishing out on each other. Like, I'm like, bro, because like we find out later on they had an inkling. That they were being investigated. No, so it wasn't time, inkling. It wasn't inkling. They knew. They knew. Mm-hmm. They knew. They knew. That, that, that's, that's they told they Jenkins. Should, they told Jenkins. That's why when when, you, when the scenes where they were talking on the phone, right? They were they were like they were saying like the same thing over and over again, right? And you're like, and then I didn't in the moment I was like, what the hell are they doing? What is this stupid shit? Then I realized they know they're being they know they're being monitored. They know they're being monitored, and then they cut to them being monitored. They didn't know. Just, they would they were just being listen that that is sort of like that what's up like that braggadocious thing it wasn't so, so I'm they didn't too much credit, I'm giving right, too yeah. much credit. You know, I mean they they knew but they thought like like um like Gondo said oh no no Ram said he was like it's a federal case it's gonna take a while for them to get to it like they mm-hmm. knew they were being investigated but they figured it was gonna take a while for them to get caught yeah Caleb yeah. your thoughts on this I'm about Tony any thoughts Caleb the no, stitching I, I keep on think, stitching yeah Yeah, I'm just, it's just, it's just funny to see how um, their their arrogance, like even Jenkins, when they told Jenkins, like Jenkins didn't think oh, he was being investigated. He thought, oh, it was just you know them, they were getting the, the other his crew, you know, because because um, I think everybody just thought they would just keep getting away with it, you know, and um, that's why that's why they just didn't feel like they had to take any of that how much precaution what they were doing, like talking on the phone, even though they they um, well, I don't know if they did or not. No, they mean uh bug because you see um go um but the other uh woman cop go in um but bug gondo's um car so i i don't know they they know i don't know if they knew that he's being bugged yeah. but they they knew they would be investigated and they still just went on did their thing 
didn't really care. And yeah, because I mean, they got away with it so hey, much. I mean, even Ferris. if they did, what happened? You sitting there massaging your mic? All right, and we sorry, can hear. my bad. My bad. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Sorry no, about that. But, sorry, sorry. But sorry. I think I think he. No, I think they feel like that because I'm like said, Raymond, like he, he killed people and got away with this. So why the hell wouldn't he get away with this? You know? Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just how they all felt. Honestly, man, like let's talk about how like Sergeant Allers brought his son on a raid. Can we talk about that? How like this man was like, you know, I'm gonna take my kid, I'm gonna take my kid to us jacking up innocent people. So I want I want thoughts on seeing that man's son on that BS raid, Deshaun. What was going through he your takes mind? Pride. Like, he oh takes pride in being a piece of shit and he wants oh his son God. to be proud of him for it too. That's what I took from it. Like yeah. Excuse my language, but there's no other way you could justify that. Like, and then it just annoyed me because his son was just this is happy as to be could just to tag along, just walking right on along beside his father like a good little soldier. Like it just annoyed me because like bro, you don't even got no business being here. And here you are getting ready to go mess up somebody's life just because your daddy told you. Like, I mean, but you know, you see how they just, they keep it in the family, and they're and he's breeding his son to be the next piece of shit, and his son is going to breed his grandson to be the next piece of shit, and then it's going to keep on continuing. That's how that's how they they breed more bad apples. Mm. Hendo, what about you, man? I just thought the caucasity just <laughs> you 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 really believe that you just got so much that you can just up and say, "Hey, bring my son to work and show my son I'm a piece of crap." Now, a lot of cops, like, who is it? Ward, he tries to hide from his family that he's a piece of shit. Like, he tries to keep that out of his household. Like, a, a, like a good man, like a good man is. Like a good criminal is. <laughs> yeah. But you but you sit here and show your son, we're going to go to somebody's house and rob them of their money. I'm showing you what I do on a daily basis. And you're, and you're setting that foundation just for further criminality in your family. And like I said, the caucasity, they just believe they can do whatever they want and get away with it. Mm-hmm. Well, honestly, man, like I, we could we could talk about the nuts and bolts, but I really want to talk about this scene, right? Um, but you know, like then they end up talking about they talk to Maurice and he's talking about how the 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 gun the, the, the task will kind of changed because it was a new team because Jenkins, him, Taylor, Hendricks just came on. So it's like a brand new team. And then they talk. And then he talks about K Stop for a little. We'll talk about mm-hmm. K Stop a little later on. You know, shout out to K Stop. K Stop, shout out to you. Oh, we'll talk. That's the but one I, really I want to talk about. Yeah, K-Stop. we'll talk about that one. Yeah, we'll talk about that one. But I really want to talk about like this Nicole Steele because, like, you know, like kind of like it kind of got like a little BS because they cut to like them talking on the phone, like be like, bruh, 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 bruh. You're like, bruh, shut up. We don't care. <laughs> but when she's when she's talking to the former <laughs> cop, mm-hmm. that scene. That scene is what I want to talk about. I want you guys' thoughts on that scene where she goes to the police academy and she talks to an educator in the police academy and he's saying all the, the right words. He's saying all the right things. But do you believe him? Do you believe what he's saying? Let's start with you, Caleb. He believes it. Oh, oh. You believe he believes it? Let's go to you. You believe he believes it? Why? I believe he might believe it and I think him believing it has nothing to do with how those other bad apples that come through that academy are going to receive his message. You know what I'm saying? Because what do we hear? The first thing that Jenkins, uh, right along God told him, and what did he tell the guy that he was over as soon as he came into the room, everything yeah. you heard in, in the academy, fuck that shit. All that stuff about morals and integrity and actually valuing the lives of the people that they paying us tax dollars to protect. Don't even worry about it. You go out here and be as, Big of a piece of shit as possible. So it's like you can have somebody like him who might have all the greatest intentions in the world, but he's only one voice. And he's a voice that nobody takes seriously. Like at the end of the day, it ain't gonna be you're not gonna see change, you're not gonna see any type of reform until the people with the actual power have, you know, the same morals and mindsets of any average decent human being. But unfortunately. You're not in that type of society right now. Mm-hmm. Hendo, what about you, my man? Yeah. Um, I believe that I I'm not a very trusting person, mm-hmm. but 
I believe that he he may be telling some of the truth, or at least he believes that he is, because he told her a cop can't uphold the law until he understands it. And in a lot of instances, they cops know the law less than people do. They know mm-hmm. the actual laws and less. And how can you enforce something that you don't know? And, you know, he just spoke about the war on drugs. He brought up valid points. So I think that he believes he's doing the right thing or he's teaching the right thing to these recruits and sending them out there with more knowledge than they would if he wasn't around. Kelp, mm-hmm. wrap it up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, some of the cops, you know, take take to heart what he's saying because you see the case stop, you know, he straight, like he took, um, you know, his lessons to heart. Um, but then you, like I said, there's other guys like Jenkins grooming them, just you know, totally not groom them out of that and say no. Uh, so you, if you got other cops telling not, not to listen to that guy, and I mean, who do you listen to? Um, you know, that's that's I guess that's up to the person. You know, how, how good of a person you are to which which direction you're gonna go in. You know. Well, yeah, man. I, Cause like um, when he's talking about like he's talking about uh, you could. He used to tell me like you could used to make an arrest for a rapist or a robbery, you know. He said he like he said you know there was there was still a code of no snitching, but there were enough people who would talk to you, who would talk to you, and now it's like no one, it's like no one, like no one talks to you, no one will talk to you, no one's gonna say anything because like, and he brings up like SWAT teams. Would you talk to an ex wielding murderer? It's the same no. thing. Exactly. No, none. You know, I ain't got nothing to say to Michael Myers. Exactly. How about, about that? Most definitely. You know, strip searches, stop and frisks, tactical squads, SWAT teams. Like, it's not. It's like it's a war on the people. That's pretty much what the war on drugs is. It's. Yeah. It's. They don't really like drug addicts. They think they're leeches on society. They don't really treat it as like a disease. It's not, it's not, it's yeah, not it's a just, war. It's not a war on drugs, for it's, us. It's not. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's a war. I, it's a war on I, a. Yeah. It's a war on a sector of people. Yes, it's, mm-hmm. it's just an excuse that they use. It's a political ploy that helps mm-hmm. them get elected. It's a platform that they stand on. Like we got to get these drugs together, even yeah. though I'm the one that brought the drugs in, and I'm letting these people and these cops, you know, kind of dish it out and sell it. But mm-hmm. you know, we're gonna stop it if you elect me. So, yeah, I'm even with you, man. I'm with you. Criminal than anybody I'm talking about, like, oh uh, man, hmm. yeah. yeah and you're talking about the, the 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 police work for the politicians. Come up with the fancy, you know, slogans and whatnot. And that's how they get reelected because they have numbers and look at yep. all how I'm changing, but not really yeah. changing anything. And then just keep going over and over. Yeah, exactly. Because like he said, you know, when you make the arrest, you get the stat, even if it doesn't, even if you don't convict in court. So like you get the stat, you're like, oh, we've arrests are up. Crime is down. But really, like, it's not because they can't convict. They can't convict. And they're all liars. You can't get you can't even get like 12 people into a, hmm. a 11 people into a jury box and you're like what's going on man like so it's like, oh, no. they yeah. themselves when they say arrests are up so crime must be down but unless yeah. you just out here arresting people that ain't doing nothing how are you arresting all these people that ain't if if crime's down like, right that's what, you I'm, know saying. what I'm saying they always they look for a slogan and they look for like war on drugs like they look at it as a slogan and as a catchphrase, something easy to say to get people on their side and chant for them at a rally. But that one little three word catchphrase is going to ruin the lives of an entire sector of people. Like Hendo said, like, <laughs> it's just, they don't even, mm-hmm. cons- they don't even take the people into consideration. And that's the first problem. Yeah, man. Cause, cause, um, cause the former cop, I think Gar- Garbler said in 2005, when O'Malley was the mayor, the cops made a hundred thousand arrests, and then he equated to one in every six Baltimoreans mm-hmm. got arrested. One in six. That's yo. Most and of some, them were black. Most of them were poor. Like, yeah. and some of them got arrested six to seven times a piece. Exactly. Exactly. Just by sitting on the stoop or spitting in the street, loitering. You know. You know. B- BS. Yeah. Anything, man. Living like, while black. Exactly, like bro, it is what it is. Now I was about to say, like I did. I was about to say something, Hendo. You, you said something. I was about to say something, but I forgot, man. I forgot. My bad. It's all right. But now let's talk about um, like they bring up. Stop. Uh, no, not K stop. Right before K stop is they robbed this one dude, and that scene was was pretty crazy because they someone was it Glenn Wells they said. 
You talking about you talking about the uh the the, the, the rich the rich the rich, the rich oh, not the rich the, dude Ronald Nancy Hamilton. Yeah, the Hamiltons. Where like they had a nice car in the house and they kind of just like like this. I feel like this this robbery was the epitome of them because in this robbery you have them pick out the target. You have Ram rob the target on the stop and not tell nobody. You then then they go then they drive him back to his house. You see Herschel find cash, rob him and rob him twice, you know, steal from them and then steal from him. And then you you see Herschel and not Herschel, you see Jenkins try to finesse the brother, and then the brother finds out he got robbed and they multiple times. And then the state then the county police don't know what the hell going on. And this was like the perfect robbery to explain how bad these people are. Like they, they just seem like rich they just seem like rich black folk, but they assume they're selling drugs. They assume it. I, I don't I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I know that for a fact. Maybe, but they but the assumption is the assumption. So it is what it is. So like this is like the this is like the trifecta of how they work. Target, rob him, keep it for yourself, go to his house, rob him again, keep some for yourself, give the rest of the boys. Uh, county police don't know what the hell's going on. Lie that you're a federal prosecutor. He lied and said he's a federal prosecutor. And Hamilton knew for a fact he wasn't a federal prosecutor. So he told him to screw off. So guys, so okay, let's go to you, Caleb. When you were seeing all this unmitigated nonsense happening on your screen where Jenkins... Is a federal prosecutor, and it, okay, bro, just just take me through your thoughts, bro. Because that, that's what I'm saying. It's another part that I thought was kind of funny. You know, seeing the lengths that he'll go to, um, to to get his money. You know, like you saw, like oh, you thought just making this whole you know scene the other episode of you know opening the safe. Nah, I'll, I'll impersonate this. You know, that's attorney. a real thing. That's a real thing. Yo, Jose sent me the video. I watched it, bro. I watched the actual video of that scene. I was losing my shit. I was laughing my ass off. It was it was nonsense. Continue, Caleb. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the links that they'll go to, they're just he'll, he'll do anything. You know, he doesn't he doesn't care. You know, he, he, and he was so adamant. Like even after the initial stealing from, him, he still wanted more. He wanted to find the drugs. He wanted to do more. Even after they just stole from him, so it's like, damn. And then you just and that, and then you just see all this, you know, stealing from each other, it's like. They don't. They, they just want to get theirs, you know. They don't really care, you know, about the crew. They just, you know, try to get, try to steal for for what for themselves. Mm-hmm. Hand all your thoughts on the entire smorgasbord <laughs> of this arrest. I, now, this is what I would. I now this part I thought was funny. Like, you really expect me to believe that you are a U.S. attorney? You just <laughs> sit there with your little T-shirt on, like, yeah, just tell me what's happening, use I. Bruh, I, 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 it, it amazed me that they thought that they could get away with it, but I guess in some instances when people are scared that they will actually believe it. But that part was crazy. Now, when they got to his house, I was a, I was a little ticked off because I wanted to know how county cops will leave city cops there, like they're out of their jurisdiction, and where they were, city cops were way out of their jurisdiction. If they were that far up in Westminster, 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 Westminster yes. They are way out of their jurisdiction. They left him there. And he kind of told the dude, like, listen, bruh, Eva, in so many words, either you going to let me know who your drug supplier is or we going to leave some drugs in your backyard for them to find because the guy had six convictions already. So they were using that against him to kind of make him be their drug mule. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much. Deshaun, your thoughts, my brother. I think he's frozen. Yeah, he's frozen. Well, at first, when they frozen, you were a little, you were a little frozen. But can you hear us? Can you he's talk? Frozen again. Um, yeah, let me hear. Uh, hold on. All right. Good. Good. Backs and memories from college, you know. Um, I honestly thought this scene was basically just an epitome of everything that they had been doing the entire season. Like, 
I steal from you, you steal here, I still I portray this like th there's no integrity amongst any of them and it's no coordination. It's not like they had this all organized as a plan like you're going to do this part and that part like no, they was all looking out for their own skin and they just all was stealing from each other. It's like they don't even care about each other as comrades and as a group like <laughs> they don't care about nothing but themselves and it's like you get that many self-centered and self-absorbed people on a team together it's only going to be bad for everybody else around like it's only going to be bad stuff to happen when you got that many like selfish people mm -hmm. um and you give them power like it's it's gross yeah man i'm with you i'm with you man it was just complete another just chaos like this like was like if you want to talk about like like what do you show them of how bad of a group of guys they were? You show them what happened in Westminster. You show them what happened with the guy. Like you just show, like you see how like they robbed him multiple times. They basically like kind of like basically like, hey, be our be our drug guy, be our drug guy. Okay. Listen, this is why I think this scene and a couple of others are why Ray became my favorite person mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when they asked when they asked him, he's like, oh shit. Y'all know about that too. Y'all really been doing y'all <laughs> like just the, just the way he was the whole time. Yeah. Was like y'all know about that? Hey, Dang. Just casual with it. <laughs> right. yeah. He was just like he mm. he probably like hey man, what else y'all know? Y'all didn't listen to everything, did y'all? Please, yeah, please, guys. You know what I mean? Because he yeah. probably said some things. You know what I mean? Like he was like hey hey hey. He was just resigned to his fate of listen. You caught me, but I'm surprised you knew that much about me. But exactly. yeah, he slowly but surely became my favorite uh favorite person on the show. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, you know, I, I, a new person showed up on the show is uh, Wayne Jenkins family man. Uh, so there is an entire section of this episode where they like they just talk about Jenkins was this good old family man. He's met his girl in high school and they were together forever. And he has two kids. Uh, he had a nice house. Uh, guys, what did you think of Wayne Jenkins family man in this episode? Let's go to you, Deshaun, right away. I thought that Wayne Jenkins was completely chock full of shit. <laughs> like, that is, I mean, you could just tell, like, he, it was all of the side. Like, he's watching porn and as his wife's putting the kids to bed. Like, <laughs> like this is a dude that doesn't even well, I think, really I think care he was about his own I think that's Oh, like, my bad. My bad. Yeah, because he ended up getting a hooker he later get a on. Hooker. No, he yeah, didn't get a hooker. It was somebody at the hotel, uh, right? That yeah. that was his that was his regular. Uh, that was his regular uh, girl. Okay. Okay, yeah. So like, oh. you know, just showing him just being a sleaze bag is. <laughs> I knew that like none of that, that was portraying or like that he was doing as being a family man. I knew none of that was like really him. It's just at the end of the day. It's a man with no real morals, and, it, and I keep and I sound redundant, and I keep saying it, but it's like you don't care about your own family. You don't care about the people you serve. You don't care about your own family. You don't care about the people you work with. Like everything about Wayne Jenkins is just self-absorbed and arrogant, egotistical, and I'm all about me at the end of the day. Just me, 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 and that's what all these cops, uh, Ram, Gondo. Herschel, especially, that's all they about is themselves. And it's like, it's funny to see, though, it's like that even translates back with their own families. Like, and that's something you wouldn't necessarily expect. You know, at a certain point, everybody's got their family, their wife and kids. They would never let nothing, you know, compromise that. But Wayne Jenkins don't care. He he don't care about none of that. Yeah. Hand up. Yeah, I just think. Uh, you good, you good, John. I just think Jenkins is a, uh, he's full of crap. Like, you know, I, I know that there's a, a duality in his mind of him being this family man, this righteous person and a slime bag. But you could just look at how even his family life took place. His wife talked about, hey, you you uh, good with pasta for dinner. And he's like, yeah. But then he goes to this fine dining and he's eating by himself. Like, who does, like, you're not going to take your wife out. Like, you're not going to spend some of that money on her. I'm sure that he believes in his mind. He's a good father, a good man, a good cop, but he's just a piece of crap. Caleb, wrap it up for us. I just want to know, is Eden not cheating? 
Is, is that true? Apparently, according to Wayne Jenkins, it's not, it's true. <laughs> and I quote, he said, if eating ain't cheating, that's what Wayne mm. Jenkins said. Uh, so False. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. So apparently just, just getting False. A, let let his wife let his wife yeah. be eaten. Let him walk exactly. and let his wife be eaten and see yeah. what happens. He'll kill that guy on the spot. Exactly. And probably get away with it too. Probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now speaking of you know good cops, this is what y'all all came came for. Let's talk about good old James Costopolis. <laughs> It's stop. K-Stop. Kostopolis. Kostopolis. Stop, please. Stop, please. K-Stop. Stop, please. <laughs> K-Stop. Yo, Caleb, when Maurice first brought up K-Stop and then brought him up again, what, what were your initial thoughts on K-Stop and where do you think it was going to go? Um. Well, obviously, I thought, you know, you see him being groomed, you think he's just going to be another one of the the good cops that still just follow into it and just, you know, go through it. But, you know, they have like moral dilemma, just like you've seen with Ward, you've seen with Suter, you know, but no, this wasn't just a straight dude. Uh, you know, he was just, you know, I'm not down with this shit. You know, uh, I, the, in the, you know, they even said like, you know, um, Jenkins forgot that there is just, you know, some good cops out there and not everybody's a piece of shit like him, you know, they're not willing to do this. And no, it's good to see, you know, it's good to see even, the cops, you know, you know, there are, you know, good people that are just like not, I'm not even gonna do any of this. I'm not even going through the motions. I'm just totally not down with it. And yeah. And it's funny that he had him transferred right out. I was like, okay, he's out. He's not with us. Yeah. Hand up. Um, so in the beginning, I was I was kind of wrong. Like you could see the doughy. Uh, Google out, look in his eyes, looking at Jenkins like he was looking for a father figure or somebody to look up to. So I thought, okay, he done found his replacement. He done found a guy that's going to follow in his footsteps and carry on with the nonsense. But as we saw later on in the alley, we were wrong. Like he told him like, yo, we have badges. We don't do stuff like that. But it also got me to thinking of what we talked about, like Deshaun and I said, and you said as well. They they had you leave your car your um phone in the car. You brought me into a dark alley to ask me some questions that aren't really ethical. So I should I, as a cop should know you're asking me this for a reason. It must be stuff that you're doing, and then you transfer me out after I don't comply with what you're saying. So I now know if I didn't before you're dirty, but I didn't do anything about it. I went on about my career and said nothing. So once yep. again. You have good cops watching bad cops do other things. So I, I wasn't as high on K Stop as I was in the beginning when he first kind of shut him down. Mm-hmm. Sean, your thing, man. No, nah, I agree with Hendo a thousand percent on that, man. Like, you should have known. Like, you should have known from the minute they called you in there with him and Herschel. Like, yeah. it's no secret the stuff that Herschel be doing. It's not like he covers it up from the rookies. Like he does it in front of y'all all all the time. So even if you had never seen him do it, yeah, in broad daylight. So I'm sure you heard about Herschel at some point. I'm sure you've heard about Jenkins. Like, and you probably looked up to him thinking that he was this great, great cop or whatever. But like Hendo said, man, once you see these people's true colors, like when somebody shows you who they are the first time, believe them. Believe them. And then Mm -hmm. once they show you who they are, you know, it's up to you to have integrity and morals. It's like, is my job as a cop that wasn't too hard for me to get in the first place more important to me than, you know what I'm saying, the people that I'm signing up to protect? Because if you didn't sign up to be a cop to protect people, then you didn't sign up to be a cop for the right reasons. So, yeah, I agree with Hendo. If you knew exactly what they was about and you didn't say nothing, you your silence was complicit in that one. Mm. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. When they kept talking about K Stop, right? And they talked about how like he like looked up to Jenkins and like you know, he's like, This Jenkins is gonna be this Jenkins right hand man, he knew him from patrol. I thought they were gonna go to a scene where like I thought I thought they were gonna be like K Stop died. You know what I mean? Like something mm-hmm. happened on a stop where a, a gunfight happened, and like this 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 golden kid that Jenkins found, like, was murdered. And then Jenkins kind of like, and I thought it was going to devolve into like Jenkins got like more angry and erratic and went to rob more people and stuff like that. That's what I thought. So when they talk to him about being dirty and he says, nah, we don't do that. We cops. We don't do that. I'm like, whoa, 
this is not how I thought this was gonna go. This is because I automatically presumed this go this is gonna be like a, like a tragic dirty cop thing where like the dirty cop dies and the other dirty cops get sad, especially Jenkins. <laughs> Cause right. like this is his, this is his, you know, this is his, his Robin. Like this is my Robin. I'm, I'm trying to like make you Batman, but like when dude, when, when Reese is telling the story, and he's just laughing his ass off. I was like, okay, I don't think K Stop died. Uh, what happened? Because <laughs> that's not how someone reacts if someone died. And then they cut to the scene with, with K Stop's whack mustache. And he's like, he's like this little <laughs> stupid ass little mustache. And, he, and he's like really serious. He's like, we don't do that, Jenkins. We're <laughs> officers of the law. How yeah. dare you? And I'm like, what the hell just happened? You know what I mean? And then, like, the Jilly, like you said, you got transferred for a reason. Mm-hmm. What was that reason? You were doing everything perfect to that moment. That moment changed everything. And you said nothing. So, like, you're not a good cop, K-Stop. You think you're a good cop. You say those words in that moment. But in reality, overall, you're just like one of the others. You're just like one of the others. Because at the end of the day, you say nothing when some bad's happening. You're doing you're just amplifying what the bad thing is. It is what it is. It's dereliction of duty. Exactly. So pretty much, you know, they kind of like the show kind of ends. Like, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here, guys. Mm-hmm. It kind of ends now to like I think that I don't I think we, we're not getting enough from the from the federal prosecutors, not the not the officers, but like the DOJ people, like 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 Nicole Steele, like we get pieces of them, but mm. I want to know, like I feel like there's more to the story, and you want to talk about a oh my god, you want to talk about a scene that infuriated me, when Nicole Steele is telling them this is what you got to do to save your city's police department and its people, and this new mayor is just like sitting there like I don't know. Maybe, and then you have her two fucking cronies saying, "No, we may have to like get rid." Like, oh my dude, okay, Deshaun, yeah, your thoughts on that scene when you were watching that? Like, who is this mayor? This like, Catherine, like is she Hughes still there? Is, is she still there? <laughs> she, <laughs> she's still, okay, is she still there? No, oh, you don't thing. know about you don't thing. know about Catherine Pew. Thank God, no, I don't. No, didn't I don't. she just didn't she just get out of jail? Wait, wow. what? She was in jail. I what? think she wasn't that the one that went to jail. I, I know that's like, dude. I, I think you talking about Marilyn Mosby. Well, Marilyn Mosby might be like about to go to jail. That's the prosecutor. No, 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 the prosecutor. Uh, Mosby's yeah, the prosecutor. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Hendo, no offense, man. Like, yes, Catherine Pugh. She yeah. so so. I don't really know because once I moved out of the city, I just stopped paying attention to the city altogether. Um, but. Was it Catherine Pugh? She wrote some children's books and she was going around getting deals and money and stuff. And she went, I believe she went to jail. As a matter of fact, there's a TV yeah, she show. Went to three years. There's a TV show on, and I think it, it's either tonight or tomorrow. I can't remember the name of the TV show, but I think it's on Vice or something. Um, uh, and it's gonna they're gonna do her story either this week or next week. But she just got out of jail and um from Louisiana. Yeah, so yeah, she's not still here. No, That's she wild. was in jail for That's three wild. years for real. And um and yeah, I shared a lot of the same feelings as you, Ferris, with that scene is like once again, y'all care more about your bottom line budgeting and funding than these people's lives. And the thing that pissed me off of that scene the most is like you got her I don't know if it was her secretary, her assistant, whoever this this lady was next to her, she said I'm all about police reform, but not at the cost of social programs. Excuse me? Like, your social programs, whatever they may be, that you think that you're saving young black men's lives so much is more important than reforming the assassins that are taking them off the streets in the first place? Like, Mm -hmm. that's That's the type of stuff. And it just pissed me off that it was like, it was a black woman to say that type of stuff, but that's just how politics goes is that people don't care about their, their, their kin. They don't care about, you know what I'm saying? Their culture, their community that they represent at the end of the day, they're going to do whatever it is to, they got to do to fit in with the good old boys club known as a political party. And 
-hmm. it's just disgusting to me that they that these people with the power and authority to make decisions that's going to affect how i'm viewed how my kids viewed how my kids kids is viewed they don't that's how they think bro like that's infuriating so i shared a lot of the same feelings as you bro yeah not man because like because they you know because they're talking about the expense of it the expense the expense yo man money ain't real the dollar bill ain't real what expense like it's not real i was having this conversation with caleb a while ago i find out that the american dollar don't mean nothing really like they borrow it they borrow money from themselves mm -hmm. they just print cash like it means nothing. Like the the dollar bill don't mean nothing. You talking about this expense? This expense? What expense? Just borrow the cash. Cause guess what? It don't mean nothing in the end. Cause it don't. Cause it's they have created this sense of power on the American dollar. It is so powerful in that because they think it means something. They think it means something. It don't. It means nothing. So like when when this yo know, when she used young black men as the reason to not reform the police like no 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 i was like what so the reason you're not going to reform the police is because of young black men because you want to like put them in like a a program where they learn how to do the flute but instead of reforming the police who like may shoot that young man from going to flute practice what's worse not learn how to do do the flute or getting shot in the street going to the flute I don't know why I use the the flute. I think it's because, because the lady, girl, because the, Erica, okay, yeah, I mean, because the FBI, Erica, she played yeah, the flute. Exactly. So, like, what's what's more, Deshaun? Like, what's like not being able to play the flute or not not being able, like not getting shot going to play the flute? Like, I'm confused. Here. Like, like Deshaun, like I, I know I know Deshaun has a certain way. Desha uh, Hundo, your view on that scene when they were basically trying to say, you know, you know, the programs for the young black man, we can't really, you know, I'm, siphon off. The, what do you think? I'm 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 on the fence about that. Like, yeah, I, I understand essentially what they're saying. Of you know, we got to keep this money aside for these minorities to have these programs. But as a as a minority in this that's been a part of this city for a very long time, I'm wondering where this money is going to. Because for the longest, I think for the at least the last 25 years or so, they've kind of taken out all the basketball courts around the city. And right next to the basketball courts are tennis courts. Didn't touch the tennis courts, but <laughs> took the basketball courts down. I wonder you know, why. exactly. So it's like, mm -hmm. what programs are you putting into it? Then also, if you're from here, you know that every year they repave 695, our interstate. Like, how many times can you keep putting money into repaving the same stretch, the same mm -hmm. 10 miles or so? But then, again, you also have to look at it like, they Everywhere said, listen, else pot holes up the edge. Right. But you also got to look at it like they said, listen, we need to kind of allocate this money from the police department. And this whole episode alluded to all these officers stealing overtime. So if you weren't allowing these officers to steal this overtime, you could actually take the money from the police force and put it into this. So I think both parties are at fault here. And that's kind of like the same reasoning that we have the, the, the dissent, the uh, consent decree. Mm -hmm. Because the consent decree kind of establishes an agreement without anybody admitting to fault. And that's, yeah, what, yeah, and that's what both of them are doing. They're kind of like, listen, I need this, but I don't want to give up that. Well, you got this and you're using too much of it. So we need to find this happy medium. So I, I think both of, them are, both of them are at fault. And for them not to sit there and try to find a strategic compromise to get it done is an issue. And that's why we never get things done because nobody wants to concede their point of view. All right, kill. Uh, yeah. Well, well they, they, well, which I don't know. Like, if they put the money to these programs, it's always tainted. Like, like Tony was saying, like you don't know if the, all the money's going to. So you never see like the final results of the program. So I understand them wanting to put in the programs, but you got to let it play out. You got to see the full results of, it. and that may that may be the change. Like, I'm not, I'm not a politician. I don't know where to direct money or what, what. You know the right thing to do with it here is because i do think they're trying to uh you know with you know certain programs that could help you know keep people going in you know people uh those that people that need these programs to going into you know into crime or drugs or whatever to keep them off the streets and all that 
So I, I feel like that is like it feels like that's the right thing to do. But and you know, do you ever see that through? Like I, I don't know if that actually happens. You know. Yeah, man. Because I'm a real with you, man. We pay we pay taxes. We all we all pay taxes, right? Where do taxes go? Where do they really go? Do we really know? You tell me. Yeah, exactly. What do they do? Because here's the thing. I remember California when we passed uh, recreational marijuana, right? Mm-hmm. We passed it. We didn't know where the, the so like uh, so like people just passed it, right? And then I find out. I read a little bit into it. We paid a tax on the marijuana bill early on. We just paid the tax. It never went anywhere. It just never went anywhere. And then it was kind of like for the first couple of years, it was kind of like a like a little slush fund for California politicians. Mm-hmm. So you know, people are paying this weed tax, and they're paying this weed tax, and California making this money on this weed tax. But where the weed tax money going? You know into, what I mean? Into the politicians' pockets. Exactly. That's the thing I'm talking about. Like they, they keep talking Christmas about like. Book. Exactly, bro. Like so, like like I get like these programs and all, man. Like, but like here's the thing, like, they they bring up these programs, like 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 Kendo said, y- y'all took the basketball courts. You know what I mean? Like, what, what programs are we talking about? Like, what programs? Like, let me see the programs. Like, wh- where are the programs at? Like, like I get it. Like, I understand what she's talking about, like the programs. But like, let's see the programs. You talking about these programs? Where are these programs at? Like, and you don't know. You just don't, you just don't know. Like, dude, th- every day they're lying to our faces. Yep. And it gets to the point where, like, I'm, I'm sick and tired of getting lied to. She's irritating. <clears throat> but I guess so let's let's wrap it up. I want I want to talk about like. The press conference, I just want to get like, like, because this was a real press conference. Like, I never watched the real press conference. I may, I may mm-hmm. end up watching it. I don't know if Deshaun or uh, Caleb did. Did y'all ever watch the real press conference? No? no? I did, but it was like a long time ago. So, like, yeah. <laughs> it was like back when you, I was in high school, I believe. Yeah. You saw it, but you didn't pay attention to it. Like, yeah, exactly. I didn't. Hendo, did I was you, in high school, did you, so did I wasn't really it? paying attention. Like, did you Did you watch it, Hendo? I saw it. I didn't pay attention to it. Like no. I, once again, when I left the city, I left the city, physically and mentally. Okay, understandable. That. Understandable. All right, guys. Then the, and then, Sean Suter then sees everybody get arrested. He sees he sees Jenkins. He sees Maurice. He sees he Gondo. Go he sees, and he had to go to the bathroom because that man was tripping. That man was like, "Oh my god!" He am, was I thinking, am, I, am I next? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god! Oh my god! Because they he cut back to the scene. Bricks. No, bro, dude, he was. Dude, did they cut to the scene where he he's in the car with with Jenkins, and Jenkins says, "Take it," mm-hmm. and he looks at it like, and he like picks up one of the he picks up one of the one of the one of the bands. He picks it up, and but they cut back to him in the in the bathroom. Yep. So you so you he took it like y'all thinking he took it. He had to. He yeah, had to take it. Because yeah, yeah, if, if he didn't he take it, he he didn't trust. He wouldn't trust him anymore. Exactly. So he had to take it. Yeah. If he didn't take the money, he would have got blackballed, and he'd still be a beat cop somewhere yep. with yeah. the uniform on. He'd probably case stop him. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. much. Pretty much. Or what they did to that other dude that they sent him way out in the middle of nowhere. You no, know, that dude. Yeah, yeah. Where he like had the foot post where nothing happened because he wanted happened. to like. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of things happened on this episode. And a lot of things happen in this review. And on that note, guys, thank you guys for watching. But now, let's go around the way and see where people can find us. Deshaun, where can people find you, my man? Twitter and Instagram, at Jesus Nephew. Right there. Right under his name. Right next to his name, actually. Hendo, my man. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Ravens Online on Gatekeepers. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at our Gatekeepers. By the way, Subscribe. Ravens on... Unga- hey, 500 people. Shout out to the thank 500. You. Thank you. Thank you, Congrats, bro. Thank you yeah. very much. Congrats, man. Yo, bringing out the truth in the Ravens community. The truth. Man, they don't like it. Yeah, they don't like it. Don't you like are it. you are the Nicole Steele of the Ravens community. <laughs> not at all, sir. Not, 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 uh, yeah, it's, I think it was a horrible. <laughs> well, that was a horrible. Sorry. I was Tom trying to Nally. connect it. I was trying to connect it. I, I, I know. I get it. It, it. it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah. Caleb, my main man. At NFL Caleb, uh, NFL Caleb 22 on Twitter and Instagram. Find me on this channel doing various reviews and our Twitch channel doing playing some Pokemon. Yep, Caleb starting to do some Pokemon. Uh, you know, Caleb knows how to play Pokemon, guys. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't remember how playing Pokemon. I played Pokemon when I was like eight, and I don't remember how to play. I don't know any of that <laughs> stuff. 
Uh, and on that note, guys, I'm Ferris Madonna. You can find me at Ferris Madonna on Twitter. You can find me here on the Let's Get Ready Network Fridays. I'm on the highlights where I review sports documentaries and review shows. The show's going to pick up more in the, in the fall when football season starts. The Good Friends Better Rivals is going to come back with me and Caleb, yeah, where yeah. every week we just yell at each other about football opinions. <laughs> and I say, you're wrong. He says, no, you're wrong. And I say, that's your opinion? And he's like, no, that's your opinion. And that's the end of the show, pretty much. Wow. Uh, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't liked and subscribed, uh, comment. Yo, man, I don't see a lot of comments nowadays, man. Do you like the show? Do you not like the show? Do you disagree with one of us? Drop it in the comments, respectfully. Well, I, really, really, I mean, I just feel like they should say something. You can see yeah, the people something. watching. You can see the people watching it. Yeah. They like good, bad, and different something. Exactly. So on that note, Dave, have a nice, have a nice day. Stay safe, and see you next time. Happy holidays. Peace.